Howdy. I am Venture Gremlin, and I wanted to show why I think that the ship construction in in Star Drive is 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 pretty unique as compared to most other games. So first thing I'm going to do here is unlock all tech. Go to the shipyard. I unlocked all tech by pressing, by holding Control Shift and pressing F1 or F2. F1 unlocks all tech. F2 unlocks all tech for your empire. Which means um, I should only get my holes and stuff in here. Or F1 will give everyone's holes. So, um, let's see. Switch to the Mauler. Oh, it's pretty small. So, um, this is a this is a ship in Star Drive. We've added a couple of doodads here and, and a lot of extra information over here, plus um, extra information here. Um, the behavior presets are are pretty standard. Um, we've got two. Uh, broadside effects here, which will keep the ship at a broadside to the uh, uh, to its target. And carrier only is for fighters and smaller ships that can go on hangars so that they don't appear in the planetary build menus. Um, and the secondary classification, which uh, these are things we've added new. Um, Civilian lets uh, pretty much any ship be a, a freighter, and uh, combat lets freighters be not civilian ships. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so uh, I want to make a ship. So first things first, I want to get my defenses set up. So I will throw down some throw down two plus three shields here. Plus three shield here and here. Probably maybe. like a little game of Tetris trying to maneuver everything in the right spot. But that's pretty good. So, <clears throat> I like the way that these, these shields work. I mean, uh, basically the effect of this is is that these uh, radiuses that are on these um, on these shield modules, that is the shield, right? Weapon coming in, weapon fire coming in will, will hit this shield edge, um, specific to this shield. So, like, if I wanted to make a, like, a Starfleet battle sort of ship, right, then I would position the shield modules in such a way that I had these, had the shields in a very similar manner. Um, yeah, so when one of those shields drops, uh, the damage will begin to hit the ship. Um, and this is a double shield, so uh, first this outer shield will go down, and then this outer shield will go down, and then the entire front of the ship will be exposed to the terrors of space. <clears throat> so I get the, the 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 power on there, or the shields on there. So now I want to put in some basic power so that I can actually use all that. And looks like there's plenty, so. This ship is actually pretty a lot smaller than I thought it was. <coughs> mm. You can do these power conduits, but it's kind of a waste of space, but go ahead and do it anyway. Doesn't make a lot of sense to set it up that way. Not with the shields there. I might be able to move them down. No, I really gotta be there. Okay, so... They can 
reactor. Antimatter reactor. Get up there. Yeah, that'll probably work. A lot of power though. See if I can do it with the uh, like some power conduits here. I can get across. That might be enough. So <clears throat> so little power conduits here are they don't produce any energy but they they extend the the radius of the of the uh, of the uh, power generation the power plant um, not the radius but from their point they have a radius and they can I think you saw what I could do <laughs> all right so uh, um, I'm gonna put some engines on this these guys really have a small capital, or a small cruiser. So these are warp engines. Um, there's three types of engines. There's the uh, there's the warp standard and then combat thrusters. And the standard engine uh, is kind of strange. Um, it, it really it, it needs a little balancing because it doesn't make a lot of sense the way it is. So our FTL speed is very high, sublight speed is very high. So I don't know, I could save some power by Throwing these guys down here, um, so it's basically just a dead hit, free free hit. Okay, so got those basic functions on. My recharge at warp is negative, and that's not good. So I need to put more power on. I might as well put the antimatter reactor on, and that will get it up to positive. But I might have to put more on because. Um, when I get these these power units on, these weapon units on, it will probably put it over the top. We're going to go missiles this time. And I added in some information here, so it shows the offensive value as close to what it'll apply to the ship. So, um, when I put this guy, this conventional torpedo tube, does fit up there, that's, that's nice. You can put pre conventional wow. That's a lot of torpedo tubes. Okay, I like it. Oh, that's gotta be broken. Shouldn't be able to put the weapon in the middle of the ship like that. It's got something wrong with it. I'll have to fix it. Um, so, got that, that. alright, I'm going to throw on some, um, um, uh, anti, anti-missile stuff. Symmetrical. Twin core, prize, show you with armed, oh, armed crab, suffers of shields, armored shields. Yeah. I like those torpedoes, those are awesome. So, dual missiles, don't want to use that. So, we keep both the ballistic here. I want to have some uh, small ships. I got these great big cannons on here, but I want to be able to deal with smaller ships that are running around giving it a problem too. And I could do that with some of these things. Hmm. That's good. to and a little bit of 
another crossover where the arc's back up and we can't see anything. So the arc's back up and a little bit crossover here. We'll cross over the bottom, so we'll have some dead spots on the side. In here, we'll have some dead spots, that's okay. So I should probably put some extra buttons up here to uh, control which one of these things I want to see the arcs for. We'll cross over here. find that it generally works better to have these these point defense systems um, uh, protect large area or have a bunch of them pointing in the same area because um, they're 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 okay but the, you know they're not they're not gonna stop a huge barrage coming in unless you have a whole bunch of these things. Okay, so that's that, and put a command on here. I don't know if I need like this huge command module on here, but I'm going to put it on anyway. Okay, in the center of the ship. Yeah, a little bit of room. We'll have a little bit of room for, for um, buffer to defend it or to protect it. And then I'll throw a bridge on the back as an auxiliary control. Oh, yeah, and here's the uh, additional targeting stuff I added. So the the bridge has the CIC can can, can track eight additional targets and the bridge can track one additional target. So it means that um, each weapon can only fire at one can only choose to fire at one target. Uh, can only pick from one target, um, so that the ship can only have uh, its primary target, which uh, that's what the red line points to, and then one other target for a bridge, and eight other targets for a CIC. So that allows all these weapons to choose. Um, up to eight extra targets on the ship. Trying the ship. Yeah. Okay, so I want to throw some armor on there. Mm, lost my positive warp. I'm going to have to put some more warp stuff. Take that. Okay. I'm going to double buffer. In case that. Things explode. <clears throat> Pretty sure I can't put it there. there. And then some plasticine, plasticine armor. And it's really, uh, in general, to have a. It's good to have a uh, a large. <clears throat> several kinds of defense um, but I do like shields a lot Like this, that's for continuous fire. 
I might have to sacrifice some protection to... Um, <laughs> sacrifice some protection to my, um, my command center here. I still need more power to... need very much, so one of these couple of small reactors will do the trick. Okay, that makes these power these power things are explosive, so when something comes and blows this thing up, it's uh, it's gonna cause some damage in here. Having a whole bunch of power all packed together can cause a chain reaction, which will can blow out the ship, and I certainly have had that happen before. Um, <clears throat> really intricate. All these different uh, installation types and things you can put on here. Um, very intricate. Yeah, you can see the little explosion thing down here. Okay, so I still don't think I have enough. Um, I don't have enough ammo time. It's going to run out of ammo and that's going to suck. <clears throat> I'm going to sacrifice more my Defense. Boy, I hate doing that. Um, do you want the troops, but I'm gonna have to sacrifice one of the troops. And. Okay. Oh, that'll work. I'll have to do. Alright, so that's my Kalrathi uh, cruiser. And I will save it as. Save it as fleet two. Fleet two, fleet two. Hmm, it's not big enough. He's gonna get slaughtered by fleet one. I'll have to put in. I'll put another cruiser in there. We'll save it again. At least I think we'll get close slaughtered. Guys can do a carrier. Okay. 
know what I mean? I do have an escort carrier, but I don't know if it's any good or not. I'll try it. Throw down an escort carrier as well. And... That'll work. Okay. From here, I want to save the design again. As two. Now, um, unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to control the, this will be the, the um, AI fleet, and um, I'll be controlling fleet one. So, in debug mode, you can spawn fleet one and fleet two by pressing, uh, you go to debug mode by holding control shift tilde, and then fleet one, it has to be named fleet one, with a space between fleet and one, and pressing Z will spawn. There they are. Oh, that looks like okay. Super. Oh, that means that this one is not. Wow. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, right. Now this is exactly it. So this is the fleet one I made previously, um, and you can take a look at what this guy is. He's got uh, four carrier, uh, four hangar bays on him, uh, polarons, and disruptor cannons. Um, I don't think these fighters are spawning correctly. This should be spawning rockets, and it's not. Although I have the tech unlocked. I'm not sure what the deal is there, I need to fix it. And then he's got lots of these laser cannons for point defense, because they will fire at incoming missiles. And then these guys, I, I, I just threw them in there as stock ships. They're not very good. They have, well, and they've got these, they, but they're not, they've got a lot of armor on them, but they're command center is right out in front here, right? And if the ship loses its command center, it's done. You, there's, there, it, you won't be able to target or do anything or maneuver around. Um, so like this ship has a CIC and then it's got an auxiliary, two auxiliary bridges down here. Okay. Damn corner again! So you can see this guy, this is the one I put those, um, I can't really see what's going on over there, so I'm making a new one. Yeah, so... These are the laser cannons that are on the ship. So 
Yeah, so this this is the CA claw thing, right? And um, I put on these. It's got the the point defense, but they don't have any to fire at. So it's these flat cannons that are trying to hit this, and they can't seem to do it. So I wonder. Well, they're hitting it. So it appears they're hitting. Yeah, they're hitting it. remember how these work. Got those gargantuan torpedoes on there. Those are wicked. So this ship had polar on cannons on it, which are shield penetrators which is probably why it took a little bit of damage up here. It's hitting this, but it's not really doing any damage. Well, I guess it is, but... <clears throat> it must have a really hard time getting small targets. You know, those fighters have uh, the ability to evade and dodge. So, so there he lost his uh, lost his command center. Oh, hey, his, his CIC. Um, but he still has, still has the two auxiliaries. Which allows him to shoot down some of those missiles. Anyway, this is why I think this this construction is so entertaining um, because, like, um, you know, everything, the damage hits. These shields protect as exactly where they are, right? This, this ring protects these items. These uh, point defense cannons, they fire and destroy these incoming missiles. Uh, the damage here, mm, they're individually damaged by by weapon fire that hit it in these areas. Um, this ship is just ripped asunder and it really should uh, bug out, but it doesn't have anywhere to go. So it's going to blow up here. Boom. Boom. A more satisfying explosion would be nice. That Kalrathi loser uh, is much more, much more powerful. These are shielded. The, these are these are not the ones that I built. This the the uh, I've got the carrier set so that they will they will choose the best 
fighter that they have most of the time, most of the available body. You should do that all the time. If it has, if I specify a fighter on here, it should choose it, so I must have messed that up somehow. So its front shields have gone down, and uh, one of those forward shield modules has been destroyed, and the other one is, is near destroyed. Because these ships, uh, they will target those. Um, they're not just choosing random internals on here. Uh, the higher levels that they go, the uh, the tighter focus they'll get on the type of weapon or type of item that they want to hit. Um, at these low levels, it's pretty random, but because these shield modules are fairly large, um, it's able to hit them, um, but not entirely uh, without hitting other stuff. Turns out that protecting from that this uh, front room wasn't all that necessary. It might have been good to protect some of the sides and this uh, front power plant. Because when it, when it blew, it did not take out the CIC, although it was it damaged it pretty badly. So this ship is in pretty bad shape. Still has two of its. Uh, Torpedoes left. A little bit of its point defense. It doesn't have anything to shoot at, so that's the, the real trick with those uh, point defense missile the weapons is they don't serve any don't do any good unless they do any good. Although those those uh, torpedoes do just lots of damage, they they get destroyed pretty easily. As you can see by when oh I think it lost its uh, lost its auxiliary controls. This is a rem. This is one of these uh, exterminators. So the fighters, I have them set up so that um, um, they'll return to hangar if they run out of shielding. And um, they'll return to hangar if they've taken X amount of damage or lost all their ammo and need it. Um, and you can do the same thing with power. I haven't really tried it, but I mean, you can bump up their power storage and not have a whole lot of power recharge. 
so that they can um, they can have bigger guns on here. They just can't fire at them all the time. So when it runs out of power, it has to go back to the carrier. Uh, the carrier um, relaunch time is reduced by the amount of damage that the fighter has not taken and uh, how the the how much of its ammo and power and all that kind of stuff it's used. Um, health being the most important. Okay, go. Chasing up. I need to tweak this combat logic more, right? Because it's doing some kind of crazy things. This is a good attack. This is a good choice, but later on they start doing some things where they later on in the combat they start choosing smaller targets. They just love this combat. The model of the uh, the model. Comment model on here. I mean, it's, it's just so physical. He's trying to get away, but he couldn't make it. Now he's gonna lose his engines. up levels, we'll have a better, chance, a better time uh, attacking the target that they want to which makes a difference. So right now what it does is uh, I divide the ship up into these quarters. So this is The ship will see what module is closest to it. So it's targeting, the, like this guy's targeting the ship. Um, this shield is probably the closest thing to it. And then it'll take a random pick of all of the um, modules um, in that quarter. And that's how it determines it. Although it's it's generally the only the outer shell. But uh, one of these one of these blue ones is what it will choose as its target.
Anyway. What is that over here? Yeah. 